Okay, well here's the progress so far. Um, got the adapter for uh, the power feed body, the nut which holds the uh, bearing in a race. I've uh, bored out the, um, the hand wheel and I've extended the knee feed shaft and if I zoom in here well that's just about the worst spot um, of the join but uh, overall very pleased with that perfectly functional uh, the keyway um, this actually gets partially obscured by the bronze gear and uh, so I want to put in a keyway um, further up and one for the hand wheel as well and of course the issue here is someone took the knee mechanism out of my milling machine so a bit of improvisation um, is required and I've got it all set up and what I've done is to go to the shelf, pull a piece of bar stock down, I turned the end to fit the uh, the bevel gear and I did actually file a little flat for the uh, screw to bear on. I knocked up a um, rough and ready bearing out of a bit of um, plastic from the scrap bin that's a nice loose fit into the knee so that I don't have any trouble getting it out. Just a pipe clamp on there um, to get uh, that bearing into place in the knee. Um, it's a loose fit in the outer end bearing which is great. And just got to feel your way into place. There we go. And of course you've got to keep an inward pressure to keep the gears in mesh. But I can crank the knee up and down. And I've got a little job I want to get out of the way before um, doing the keyway. Um, but that'll be done shortly and I'll do the install. Now I haven't videoed um, any of the machining really. Uh, it's all been very routine stuff. There's loads of people who do great machining stuff. Um, I would rather show things like this little uh, temporary setup that uh, you know a lot of people are saying oh but I've got to go and find somebody else's milling machine when with a few minutes thought you can get a temporary solution that allows you to continue using it so I'll get the little bit of other machining I need to do out the way and put the keyways in and then uh, we'll come back and put it all together okay so now we've got the uh, new bearing retainer plate in place and you can see the two <coughs> tapped holes that actually secure the power feed and I've got the new um, nut and what I did differently to the um, the servo feed is this is threaded uh, but I haven't got enough um, distance here really to, to um, sort out a tightening arrangement so a trick I've used a few times in the past is to have a ha spare handy three jaw chuck and I can tighten that now and use the whole chuck to tighten the collar and in fact I had already given that a tweak so we're all set there. So next on is the, uh, the power feed unit itself. I'm just going to give the uh, the inner bearing, or the needle roller bearing, a little bit of a bit of grease. And 
just lock that in place. So that's now hanging on the inner race. I need to cut, find a couple of uh, M6 screws to secure it. Okay, we've got some M6 cap heads, and just got a little um, washer to go under the head. Uh, on the servo feed, it says not to use these washers. I think it probably does on the uh, the align instruction as well, um, in case they interfere with the bronze gear. But I've checked the clearance already. So we'll just pop those in. Uh, just going to align. There's a witness mark for the dial. I'm just going to line it up with the original. This unit's slightly off um, off balance, but I did check it previously. Okay, I don't, can't remember if I pointed it out before, but the original um, keyway uh, is mostly hidden by the uh, the new adapter. So there's a, a new Woodruff key here. This one was a pillow style, and there's a new one out here for the hand wheel. So the next thing to go on will be the bronze gear. We'll give that a little bit of uh, lubrication. And I just want to, at this stage, check the mesh. And I've done this previously. I hope you can hear that. It's just a little bit of backlash. And as luck would have it, that's completely without any, any shims fitted. So that's, uh, that's going to be just fine. So we shall stick a Woodruff key in. I had to make these keys. I made six. Uh, but I was left with two that I hadn't actually managed to drop on the floor and lose. So that's the keyway there. And then there's the, uh, the dial. So next on is a couple of shims that space the dial away from the feed body such that it doesn't rub, but um, there's little room for dirt to get in there and contaminate the, uh, the bevel gear. A second woodruff key. And finally, a hand wheel, like so. One of the jobs we've got to do back here, you hear that knock, and that's the uh, the knee locking handle fouling the back of the feed. So I will have to pull this off uh, one more time and uh, reshape that locking handle. I want to make a uh, a thick retaining washer for here, but just as a temporary measure, we use. Uh, moderately thick body repair type washer and there we go that's all in place feels good and, uh, next job will be to sort the uh, the wiring out even if it's only a uh, a temporary setup. Okay, I've got the power temporarily uh, hooked up. Knee going up. Knee going down. The knee gears have always been a little bit noisy. That's not doing badly. 
rapid override. Successful job. Happy with that. Uh, now, of course, I've got to take it all off again so I can get proper access to the knee locking lever and uh, reshape it. You can see the knee locking lever here. Now, this part almost certainly screws into the, the rod, so actually, I want to take this out. I want to make a longer one with a bend in it, and to get it out, I'll use the trick with the chuck again. At least I'll try to. And there we go. Either bend this and, and extend it or just make a new one. 